<laughs> Praise the Lord. It's, uh, we've accepted that invitation to uh, preach there. Uh, I preached a crusade there 21 years ago, and I promised them I would come back. And it's been 21 years. Okay. <laughs> a little bit overdue, I guess. But I finally have a, a prayed and prayed to the Lord and said, it is time. Yeah. And actually, there's going to be, uh, we're going to be preaching in one city, three times a day, two straight days. The crowds are anticipated three to 4,000 people. Wow. There's 40 pastors are helping us. Wow. And then we're going to go seven hour drive to another city where we, we will preach. Crowds are anticipated three straight nights. Uh, with crowds in the thousands, we don't know how many to show. I believe in God for multitude of yeah. salvations. Can you believe that? Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, if anybody would say it's because the Lord saves them. Yes. Pastor Ben, we can't save anybody. Yes. You're saved by grace through faith. Yes. It's not ourselves. You know, it's a gift of God, not of works. It's any man should boast. Amen. We come to the Lord Jesus Christ. This young lady's getting baptized. Who's, who else is getting baptized? You stand up, sister. Praise God. You're being baptized tonight. Uh, anybody else? You are back there? Stand up, sister. Praise God. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Baptized here tonight. Praise God. And there's more that have told us they're coming tomorrow night, and I'm sure there'll be maybe more on Sunday. So we just praise God for that. God is adding to the church, and He will continue to do that, especially in the last days, where He talks about pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. You know, the book of Joel tells you that your sons and daughters will prophesy. Amen. And old men that dream dreams, young men will see visions. There's some things that are happening right now around the world that's very important. Today is the 100th day of, day of rage in Israel, declared by uh, some of the radical Islamist uh, groups that are really, really in hatred of Israel, and it's sad. But they've declared today is day 100 of rage because it's been exactly 100 days today that President Trump declared that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. And so they are forming uh, groups to uh, have anger <laughs> and rage and a and, uh, few people get hurt and injured. I really don't think it will go very far because I haven't really seen their passion. They pretty well knew that Jerusalem is the capital. They pretty well come to the conclusion this isn't going to change. So they have to have a new strategy. If you study the Bible, you'll know that Jerusalem, God had already told Ezekiel in chapter 37 when he said, look at these dry bones. And they're very dry. Yes. And he said, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, the Lord thou knowest. And he said, then prophesy to the bones. Amen. Tell them to get up. Praise God. Yes. Tell them to believe the impossible. Because the Bible says all things are possible to them that believe. And so bone came to bone, and the yeah. sinew and the flesh came back on uh, the bones and became to stand up like a mighty army. And God said to Ezekiel, prophesy to the wind. And as he prophesied to the wind, the power of the Holy Ghost began to fill those bodies, and they came back to life. And God said, this is as if the whole house of Israel. And so the prophecy was that the Lord was going to restore Israel in one day. There's a prophecy, you can find it also in the book of Amos, that says the Lord would do it in one day. And certainly He did. But yeah. at, So as we look at the biblical prophecies, we look at the things that are happening right now around the world, uh, we can see the day approaching. But the church, and that's what the Lord has spoke to me tonight. He says, Paul, people can starting to see, and there are so many who don't know that we're living in these end times, who really don't know just how uh, serious things are, just how intense things are getting, just how uh, advanced technology is getting. For instance, Elon Musk just announced this week that he is uh, building a rocket ship. They're going to go and build a colony on Mars. He says he's got to do this to save the human race. That the world is going to be destroyed, he said, in the apocalypse of a world war. And that he and he alone has to save the human race by taking and building a colony on Mars. Alright? Now the Bible says in the book of Amos, even if they climb into the heavens, the Lord said, I will bring them back. Amen. Yes. Though you make your bed in hell, and though you dig into hell, I will pull you out. 
Amen. They've already built underground cities across America and around the world. Many nations have already built underground cities to protect themselves from the end times, to protect themselves from the return of Jesus Christ. But even the Bible said in the book of Revelation that in the last days they will cry for the rocks and the mountains to hide them from the face of him that sits on the throne. But if you, listen, listen, folks, you can hide, but you can run and hide, but the Lord's still going to find you. Can you say amen? amen? You can get in the belly of a whale and be down somewhere in the bottom of the ocean and spend three days down there, but the Lord will still come and visit you. I'm here to tell you tonight, there's no running from the end of the world. There's no escaping a God and His judgment. you got to come to Jesus Christ and be born again. Yeah. Yeah. Say amen. I've heard the water here. Praise God. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so Satan doesn't want the world to understand this. He wants to keep people in deception. He wants them to believe that somehow they can solve their own problems. And really... It's a lack of knowledge of the Word of God. It's a lack of faith. Yes, preach it. Faith comes by hearing. Amen. Hearing the Word of the Lord. Amen. How can they hear without a preacher? How can you preach unless the Lord send them Amen. and they anoint them? And so we're going to turn the Bibles, if you will, into the book of Luke, chapter 21, a very familiar scripture. If you study the end times, if you study the Word of the Lord, you know that Jesus taught the disciples that time would run out. And so in the last days, the church of Jesus Christ has to have more power Amen. than we've ever had before. Yes. We have to be more vigilant. We need to be more strong. We have to be more uh, about the Father's business. We need to occupy. Yes. We need to be not afraid of the spirit of darkness that would rise up against us in the end time. Amen. We're not afraid of anything that Satan may bring. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread over serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you. He said, Nevertheless, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written down in glory. Praise God. So if you've been saved, if you've been set free, if the chains of darkness have come off your life, then you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. You're alive in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the, the glory lives inside of you. Amen? Amen. amen? But Jesus was sitting there on the Mount of Olives in verse 7. This is Luke 21, 7. So they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? What, shall, what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. And then he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, pestilences, fearful sights, great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all of these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Christ wanted to be sure that they understood that persecution against the body of Christ is an evident fact. And if you study the world right now, 50 nations of the world, Christians are being imprisoned, they're being beaten, they're being murdered, they're being executed, they're being beheaded, being raped, they are being, uh, churches are being burnt to the ground. Uh, and even in America, a, a nation that where we have religious freedom, there's a soft persecution against us. Man, they haven't drug any of us out in the middle of the street and stoned us yet. I'm going to say yet. But uh, a lot of them would like to. Can you say amen? amen. As a matter of fact, laws are being passed and things are changing. Ordinances have been put in place to try to tear down the American family. To try to tear down the very hope of our freedom of our religion. Our freedom to worship. 
They're trying to take your ability to share the gospel to those that don't know the Lord. And they call it hate speech. Or they'll call it uh, infringing on someone else's belief or you know, yeah. whatever. Christians, I've never seen Christians. Christians are, are God-fearing but peace-loving people. Amen. We just share the love of Jesus. Yeah. We just reach out to those that are hurting. We're not trying to turn something upside down, uh, although it might happen. But what we're trying to do is get people saved and show people the light and show people the love of God and not be afraid of anything that rises against us. For if God be for us, who can be against us? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. But God is on our side and we're like a mighty army of the saints of God being taken and molded and shaped in his image and God's leading his people and I believe in the last days that the outpouring of the Holy Ghost the great harvest revival the great move of God where people will be set free healed of sickness set free from demonic spirits and the power of God will move mightily in the land can you say amen, amen. Now, sin of course is part of the problem that we deal with and because iniquity abound, the Bible even says the love of many would wax cold. And we see that today. Yes. Sister Heidi, very upset about some of the things that's been happening with uh, our Congress ladies, Marsha Blackburn and the other one, I forgot her name, her last name is Black. Diane Black. Diane Black, the governor. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both from Tennessee. Mar Marsha Blackburn, Diane Black, both of them God-fearing women who are fighting against Planned Parenthood and against the murderous spirit of abortion that has plagued this country since 1973. Yeah. Now, at the same time, we know that there's forgiveness. And some people have been misled. Maybe young ladies have been uh, given bad advice. Different situations have caused folks to maybe have been led down this path. But I want you to know that even if you're sitting here tonight and that's you... The love of God will forgive and has forgiven you. And the mercy of the Lord is here. Yes. And so the message cannot be condemnation against any one individual. But when we look at what is going on in the spirit of wickedness in high places. Where the laws are passed. Where the judges sit behind the bench. Where they have the opportunity to stop the slaughter. And to change, literally, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're trying to re-engineer the social structure of this country. And they have done it. They really have. And for too many years, the church has kind of set back. We've kind of just set back and said, we'll stay out of it. We'll let other people work on it. it maybe it's not our place. But I think we've come to a point now that if we don't stand up, tell me somebody who will. Because the politicians are not going to stand up. The, the, uh, the ordinances, the, the, the judicial system is not going to stand up. So at some point, somewhere, a Jeremiah has got to stand up. Amen. Somewhere, somebody's got to say, Lord, I'll go to Sydney. At some point, there has to be a radical, a, a move of God where people begin to pray. And I remember back in the days, back in the 70s, my mom and dad were praying people. And dad would call revival in a little country church out here, in the, in, way out in the midfields of North Judson, Indiana, at Blue Sea. He called. Bible. You'd have to shoot a flare to find that church out there, praise God. But he called revival and he announced it about a month in advance. And he'd have the little congregation of people start praying and praying and praying. And then next thing you know, on revival night, people would come piling in from everywhere. And God and, and my dad would take all the men into the back room into one room. My mom would take the women into another room. And 30 minutes before the service, they'd all start praying. The rest of the folks were showing up saying, where's everybody at? Well, half the crowd was praying in the back room that the power of God would move in the service that night. And sinners would come that you never thought you could get to come to church. And there would be people there who were wrapped up in sin, who looked like they didn't have a chance. Uh, they were as lost as a ball in tall weeds. But praise be unto God, when the service would break loose, they would come out of that back room with shouting. They'd come out. Saturday night I watched them 17 of them coming and saved another 40 rededicated 
the sons and daughters will prophesy. The old men will dream dreams, the young men will see visions. Handmaidens and servants will pour out my spirit, thus saith the Lord. Let me just say something. I know in the last days, we talk about end times all the time. Talk about Jerusalem. We talk about what's going on here and going on there. And then we got asteroids whizzing by our head. We got sinkholes opening up. We got rivers getting swallowed. We got boulders rolling down off the mountains. We got mudslides and earthquakes and, and typhoons and cyclones and hurricanes and tornadoes. We got murder. We got mass shooting. We got slaughtering. We got hatred. We got ISIS running around beheading Christians. We got absolute chaos in the land. I know that's going on. But my Bible also says that God will send a move, a powerful move. That's another sign of the end times. And that's the sign that's just about ready to break loose. So I'm going to shout in this place. Oh, I'm going to give the devil a migraine. Can you say How many times has the devil been working on you? How many times tried to wreck your life? How many times he tried to snuff you out? How many times did he tell you you were lost and undone that you might as well give up and lose your faith? How many times did he tell you that there's no need to pray anymore because God can't hear your prayer? Well, I'm here to tell you today, if you'll cry out to the Lord, he will not only hear you, but he will answer your cry. And they said, stop it. Hold it a minute. Quit telling us about our idol worship. Stop telling us about our sin. We refuse to hear what you got to say. And they buried him in dung to his neck. And they commanded him not to speak, preach, or teach anymore to stop his prophetic word. And they finally, they were going to kill him. Somebody finally had enough sense to say, Hold it a minute. Amen. The Bible does say, if you dare not touch the Lord's anointed, nor do his prophets no harm. We might not Amen. want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. we got God. a little bit of Praise faith him. over here. Yeah. So they let him out. He said, Go, he said. Be quiet. But Jeremiah said after a few days, <laughs> He said, How? How? How can you be quiet? When there's fire shut up in your bones. Yes, yes, glory. How in the world are you going to hold it back? Come on. How are you going to hold back the truth? Amen. When it's the truth that sets people free. Yes, I know Lord. that there's, you know, we've got the all kinds of the now the AI technology. And man, I'm telling you, they're working on AI technology, artificial intelligence. They've got these computers now and these robots that can actually think better than we can. Of course, in my case, that wasn't hard. <laughs> That's called Atari. <laughs> but uh, for some folks, it's been quite an achievement to actually create a computer. I mean, now you can talk to your phone. Your phone will talk back to you. Sometimes when I, I, I got the GPS on, and I'm trying to get somewhere, and I take a turn deliberately. It says, turn around, turn recalculate, turn around, turn around. Then it finally says, go to your route. It gets an attitude. My phone gets an attitude. <laughs> Literally, you can ask it, where's the closest restaurant? It will tell you all of them within 20 miles. But here's the thing. AI technology is not just information. Artificial intelligence is teaching the computer to not only tell you what's available, but to tell you where you should go eat at. And to tell you what the specials are there. And they even say to you, you shouldn't go to Cracker Barrel, Bagley, because you like the gravy too good. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm telling you is, they now have taken technological advancement where the AI technology starts to think for the human being and begins to direct in the areas that they we should go. Matter of fact, they've advanced it so much that even the medication we take, they have a delivery system now that they put, they, it's an RFID nanochip. They can put it in your medicine you take, and then they, they're, they're already working on this, folks. They've already got it. It's just getting it passed in Congress. They will then put a scanner on your bathroom door. Every time you go to the bathroom,
bathroom, the scanner will read the pill that you just took and check your blood pressure, your heart rate, your sugar rate, everything about you, and compute it back to the main brain of the headquarters of your doctor. If you haven't been eating the things that they told you to eat, it will tell the doctor what you have in your stomach. If you say you're a non-smoker, but you are, it will tell them what you are. So in other words, the insurance companies are loving this idea. Because when you get your premium, when you are signed up for your uh, insurance, you also are going to be given a set of instructions of which you must follow. And if you don't follow them, they will cancel your insurance. In other words, the AI knows, knows what's best for you better than you do. So they'll start to take away your right to choose, your right to be yourself. You will have to follow, and let me just tell you where this is going. The same technological ability. Now they have, have found that they've got AI technology. That this AI computer is teaching this AI computer. And they start talking to each other. Now both these computers can talk in every language on the earth. They can speak every language. So what the AI computers are doing creating their own language so that the human race can't understand them. Yes. Are you serious? Reach it. Why is this going on? And why is this important? If you go to the book of Revelation, you'll find that the Antichrist will also have an image of the beast. Let's go there. In Revelation chapter 13. And they already have the technology to do this. It's just a matter of time when they implement it. It says in Revelation 13, I stood upon the sand of the sea. I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, upon his heads the name blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. His feet were as the feet of a bear. His mouth was about the lion. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, that's Lucifer, which gave power to the beast, that's the Antichrist. And they worshipped the beast, or the Antichrist, saying, who's likened to the beast? Who's able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, or three and a half years. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given to him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. There, this day has come. Yes, it is. This day is coming. And I'm afraid that so many people will have no idea what's going on. And they'll be just like masses of people. They'll just follow whatever they're told to do. <laughs> whatever the government said. I guess this is what we got to do. And it's, it's deeper than that. It's not just different programs or different idea, ideals, but... Look what it says. You go a little further down. And we know that there, there's another beast. Go to verse 11. And I beheld another beast. That's the false prophet. Come up, coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. He spake as a dragon. It is the false prophet. He exercises all the power of the first beast before him. And he causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. The Antichrist. Whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth great wonders so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And he deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Now these are called lying signs and wonders. You'll find this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. When the Antichrist appears, he will have power. I believe they're going to use technology. To call fire from heaven, they already can do it with laser beams from satellites. So you know they'll come up with some other technological advancement, something that we didn't even know existed. They'll use it to deceive the people. 
And the Bible says, and he doth these great wonders, so that he made fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceived them. Because he really doesn't have this power. He really doesn't have this power. It's technologically advanced. Deception. Mm -hmm. Only God has power Amen. to send God. fire from heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. Only God has the power to send the Holy Ghost fire. Amen. All right? Yes. Hallelujah. Only God can heal people through yes. supernatural anointing, through Amen. faith. As Christians, we understand the supernatural. We understand the, the mountain-moving faith. When my mother had cancer so many years ago, almost 20 years ago, and she went through surgery and radiation, uh, we put Bible scriptures all over the walls in, in her house. So everywhere she went, on the bathroom door, on the, on the refrigerator, anywhere she went, there was... We, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the words of the Lord. Praise God. Yes. If any two would agree, touching any one thing shall be done. Amen. By his stripes we are healed. Glory. A merry heart maketh like a medicine. Yeah. All right? Amen. Just everywhere she went, the scripture said, you're healed, you're healed. Praise God, you're healed. Amen. And then finally at one point, my mom, as she was praying, turned her face to the wall and said, Lord, you healed Hezekiah and gave him 15 more years. Amen. Well, if you can do it for Hezekiah, I need you to do it for me. Can Lord. somebody say amen? amen? And the Lord healed her of the cancer, and she would then testify in church every, every so often, the Lord healed me four years ago, and he's going to give me at least 15 more years. Amen. And people would look at her and say, well, how do you know that, Sister Fran? You don't know if you've got 15. Yeah, I do, because I made a deal with God. I believe this word. Year six and year seven and year eight, some of the folks down there are already dead. But year nine, year 10, 11, 12, and she kept saying, I got at least 15. When the 15th year came, praise God, you knew she was going to say it. Praise God. Well, guess what? God's a little better than that. He says, You know what? I like you so much. How about 16, 17, 18, 19? Here comes 20. And don't mess with God because He might just tack another 20 on top of that. Praise God. Amen. You know, it's just so good to know that you can have faith. Yeah. And that's Amen. why when she was saying she prayed when little David was in that car accident, a head-on collision. And, uh, and, and the, the situation was very bleak. And my mom went to pray and cry out to God. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about faith that can move mountains. Faith that can change generations. Faith that can turn a drunkard and turn him into a deacon. Faith that can absolutely, radically change someone who looks like is headed a thousand miles an hour to the gates of damnation and turn them around and head them in the same powerful speed for the glory of God. I'm talking about the faith in the word and the salvation of Jesus Christ. Don't give up on your son or your daughter. Don't give up on your grandkids. Don't give up on your husband or your wife. Because I believe that God is already speaking to them by the very light that you shine. Can you say amen? amen. Here's the Santa Christ. See how many times he said philosophy? You see, the New World Order is not just some kind of new governmental structure. When communism took over, when Lenin and Stalin took over Russia and Europe, they didn't just say we got a new ideology. They took the Bibles. They shut the churches. They threw the preachers in jail. They said no more gospel. You're going to walk a different way. See, it's not just political. It's always spiritual. You might say, well, I'm this party or that party. Look, folks, I, I, here's the thing. I'm going to party in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but I put no faith in any one party or any one politician. But I do put my faith in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I tell you that. So we're going to push through this thing. Thank you, sister. Praise God. Amen. Wow, that feels good. Praise God. <laughs> and so whenever there, you see this, uh, there's, it's always spiritual. The Antichrist, this one world government, this new world order, this beast system is all about stopping the gospel of Jesus Christ. But in India right now, revivals are breaking out like wild. In Africa, there's unbelievable salvations taking place. In Israel, they're having revival. 
Matter of fact, just the other day, for the first time in history, the Knesset, which is their Congress, held a Bible study with Jews and Christians. First time. Praise God. It is the 70th year. And so God is sitting, they're building for the first time a Messianic synagogue for born again Jews. And when you go there, the spirit of liberty, every time I go, it's, just, it's higher. It's higher. Yes. It's like, it's like, the, the, it, it's, it, God's opening the eyes, okay? Yes. You're going to see a revival sweep through and it's going to be so unbelievable. But at the same time, you're going to see the devil make a run at the church yes. with everything he's got. So I'm telling you, I'm preparing you that you have to have faith and you have to have the fire and the power of God to overcome. Preach it, yes. So let's read on. It says here, and he doth great wonders so that he make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as it would not worship, the image of the beast should be killed. This is not a statue. No. It is some kind of image. Maybe it's a big robot. I don't know. But whatever it is, it can reason. It can think. It will command. It will order executions. It is an antichrist tool that Lucifer will use. And all you got to do is watch, folks. The technology to build this thing is already advancing. They're going to have an image. An image bigger, stronger, smarter than anything Nebuchadnezzar had. They're going to build. And I believe that the demon spirits will operate within the electronics. You say, now the devil can't operate in electronics. Have you ever watched the video games that kids are playing today? The demons are right in the game. Yeah. You ever watch it? Uh, ever come through a, come across a movie that's a horror movie? You can feel the demons. Yes. Yes. You'll say, turn that thing to whoa, turn that channel. Yeah. Why? Because demons can use the conduit of technology. Yes. You say, Pastor, I'm not sure about that. Well, I can promise you, I use the conduit of technology every day for the Holy Ghost to flow into people's homes. Do it every day. and say, I'm sitting here by myself in my home. I got my computer on and you're preaching and I can feel God all over yes. me. And I fell on my knees and got saved. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. So the devil might want to use his technology for what he's doing, but praise God, the Bible says all good and perfect gifts come down from the yeah. Father of life where there's no praise variables God. or shadow turning. Amen. Let's use everything we can to get the lost to Jesus. Ooh, yeah, Let's use everything we can. Yes. Amen. Let's do whatever we can to show people that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. Hallelujah. And the church has the responsibility. And not only do we have the responsibility, we've got the power to do it. Praise God. Yes. You've got it in you right now. I'm looking at a house full of giant killers. Yes. Glory. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some of you can take out Goliath before lunch. <laughs> Some of you got enough of spiritual power in you that demons would run from you. Amen. You know, the devils aren't taking you over. You're taking them over. Yeah. God. You should not be afraid. Nope. You should walk right into the pits of hell if you had to. Jesus did. And he tore the gates off of it. He took the keys of hell and death. Listen, there is no force of darkness on this planet that can stop you from shining the light of Jesus Christ. Even when you're unto death, even when they took Paul and stoned him three times and left him for dead, for some reason, the spirit of life stayed in, the, in him. And five times he was strapped to a post and 39 lashes. He spent a night and a day in the deep. He went and he, after they were shipwrecked and everybody on the ship were saved, they got over on this little island and they started gathering wood that they could light a fire so they could warm themselves. And as Paul was throwing wood in the fire, a serpent, a viper, 
leper came out of the fire and latched onto his hand and bit him. There were natives around watching. When they saw the viper bite him, they said, that's it, he's dead. Because they knew normally you would die in 10 seconds. But here's what the Apostle Paul did. Look, he'd already been beaten three times with stones. He'd already been whooped five times. He'd already spent a day and night in the ocean. Listen, this little snake that bit him, he just said in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory. Shook it back in the fire. Stood right there and said, let's get some more wood. Let's stoke this thing higher. And everybody wanted to watch the scene fall. He did not fall because what was surging through his body was the faith in the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, Lord. I don't know why I'm preaching like this tonight. I've got a whole different message. Amen. God said, this is the message. You want to preach on the end times? Then get the church ready for it. Because what's about to come on is the greatest confrontation in history. You think that David, little David, when he took on the giant with the five stones and a little slingshot, and the giant, the champion of the Philistines, with his armor that weighed 166 pounds, the, his armor weighed more than little David, praise yeah, God. Yes. He had a weaver beam for a spear, and he had his own shield bearer. And as he stood in the valley of Eli every day, he challenged the children of Israel to send a champion out there to fight him. And 40 days and nights, no one would step into the ring. But thank God there was a shepherd boy. <laughs> Praise God. He already had a battle with the lion. and already killed a bear. And he said, this uncircumcised Philistine will be nothing. He, God, will deliver him into my hand. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. We've got giant killers here. Amen. Now you may not have to go fight Goliath physically. Although I did have a guy choke me one time in an altar call. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big guy. I never had seen him before. He came over to Blue Sea on a Sunday night. Giving an altar call. People were coming forward. And uh, this guy walked up. Never had seen him in my life. And when I went to pray for him, he just, both hands just grabbed me around the throat and started to choke me out. If yeah. Brother Leonard, if you'd been there, you'd have knocked him out. Huh? <laughs> in the name of Jesus, of course. Amen. <laughs> now, I didn't know what to do at this point. And finally, after I was trying to pry his hands away, when I seen that he wasn't playing, all I could do was say, let it go of me. In Jesus' name. When I Amen. said Jesus' name, he fell back into the pew. Oh, I said, right there in that pew. And then I looked at the two deacons and said, get him out of here. And they did. Amen. And I said to myself, hmm, I could not physically handle this guy, but Jesus can. Amen. You never know when you're going to have I saw Billy Joe Daughtery get punched in the face in all of Did you ever see that? Yeah. Some guy walked up to him, punched him right in the face, blood running. Mm -hmm. Billy said, I still love you. Broke this man down. Said, I still love him. Yeah. You can't take the love for, I have for you away. Yeah. That man later came back to a service and got saved. Yeah. God. See, there's something about the power of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lord. His name. Yeah. Just his name. Yeah. Makes demons flee. Yes, it does. Yeah. They talk about the Nephilims. They talk about the, the uh, crawling out of the pit. You can read it in Revelation 9. It, it, we know there's a an angel with a has the keys of the bottom of the pit. They call him Apollyon or Abaddon. He has the keys. He'll unlock the keys of the bottomless pit. They'll crawl out of the pit. I understand that there's going to be some frightening things maybe that comes upon the planet. But the greatest thing you need to know, if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. And at some point, the Lord does come to get his church. I don't know the day. I don't know the hour. But I know one thing. When he comes... I'm ready to go. Can you yes, say So this Antichrist that will rise in the last days with the false prophet will be using technology to call fire down from heaven, lying signs and wonders, using AI or beast. And people will believe the beast image over you. They'll say, but the beast said this. The preacher. Why should I believe you? Because the beast said we need to do this. People will literally, at some point they will begin, of course, to take the mark of the beast. At some point, 
people will sell their soul. Some people have already done that. Some folks have already cashed it all in for the devil. They call them Luciferians. They hate God. Sister Heidi's been doing research on a doctor in Texas. She is digging. She's one thing about Heidi. She is a great researcher. Amen. You don't want her researching you. <laughs> She's researching this doctor in Texas who doesn't just abort children, but if he purposely has them birth alive so he can kill them after death, after birth. Because the body parts have more value if you don't use the certain medication to abort the child. If you can get the child to be born alive, then kill it. You can sell the parts of that baby for way more. It's called part of parts, partial birth abortion. And there's technical laws that say that if this happens, that the baby doesn't have a right to live. You know, and sometimes it happens that even in an abortion, the child lives. So they pass laws that says if you were scheduled for abortion, then you must be aborted whether you're born or not. But wait a minute. First they said, you're not alive until you're born. Which is always a puzzle name. Because if you kill a woman that's pregnant, you will be charged with capital murder for killing two people. Yes. Those same judges that say that say, but it's okay to kill a child. That is a murder. But if you kill a woman that's pregnant, that is two murders. Somebody help me understand that. Hypocrites. Lying hypocrites. And take a step further. So these guys went and got the film. Videotape them selling body parts. Well, there's this doctor in Texas who's been doing this for a long time. But all the judges and all the lawyers and everybody that surround him in this certain district, they're all in on this thing. They're all covering each other. And even Greg Abbott, who's the governor of Texas, who's a God-fearing man, is trying to stop this guy. But he can't get past the legal jargon that's tied up in this one district. And so there, there's Heidi's been studying this, and she's like, something's got to be done. I mean, it's, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let them. And they're protecting the guy's name, by the way. And so there comes a point when you start asking yourself, when does the church, what, what point do we take responsibility or take upon ourselves to reveal? When are we going to be, you know, you know, it happened to Jeremiah, it happened to Ezekiel, it, it, look in the hole, look at the abominations. So we're dealing with a wicked world now. This isn't Little House on the Prairie anymore. When we grew up in Indiana, you didn't even have to lock your doors. Here in Knox, Indiana, North Judson, Knox, there when I grew up, you didn't even have to lock your doors at night. We had a phone, it was rotary dial, and six people were on what's called a party line. Does anybody remember that? Six homes shared one line. Now six people in one house can't share one phone. All six got phones and they're still fighting. And nobody, everybody's like this, and nobody's talking to nobody. Everybody's sitting at the dinner table like that. Got, no wonder I got a bad neck. <laughs> but back in those days, six families would share one line. You picked up the line, someone, you know, Mrs. Smith was on the line, and you'd say, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, is that you, Paul? Yeah, you want to call Heidi, aren't you? I said, yeah, I am. <laughs> I'll be done in a few minutes. I said, okay, hang up. I'm like, Lord, she's another 30 minutes. <laughs> Keep clicking. Oh, and she's doing that click, click. And then, you know, then Jethro, he's two homes down. He was waiting, too. But we, somehow we all got along. We all could share the party line. But you knew who your neighbor was back then, am I right? And everybody looked out for everybody. Everybody kept love one another. And when one was down, everybody picked them up, am I right? See, that was back in the days when love still counted. Now we're in a different time, a different technological era, and a different mindset. But the same principles that brought goodness are still with us today. Amen. By the golden rule, do unto others as you have them to do unto you, it still applies. Amen. Prefer the brethren, still applies. Praise God. Sharing. Sharing is caring, okay? We're in the last days. Are you saved? 
Some of you are watching right now on the internet. You may not even realize just how wicked it is. Serial killer for loose. A thousand men got on a train two years ago on New Year's Eve in Cologne, Germany. A thousand of them. Because it was New Year's Eve, they didn't believe that women should be out celebrating with the other rest of the people. So these thousand men got on the train, went down to the town square in Cologne, Germany, and sexually assaulted and groped and raped women in the streets, and not one man was arrested. Because it was their culture. They had a religious right, they felt, and nobody challenged it. It was unbelievable. But the next day, three days later, when the fathers and husbands and brothers of the women organized a rally, Angela Merkel of Germany sent out the Nash, their, their guard, water cannons, rubber bullets, tear gas, to beat down the fathers for standing up for their daughters, just because they wanted to rally. This is what the Bible says. In the last days, they will call evil good and good evil. And this is where we're at today. We are living in the time of the soon coming of Jesus Christ. And people should be ready to meet the Lord. And don't be afraid. Don't be scared of anything. Walk with your head up. You're a Christian. I love the Hobby Lobby people. I love the fact, I love Chick-fil-A, that, that company. Amen. Not afraid to stand up for what's right. God has blessed them because they've done it. I love yeah. that. Yes. I love it when Christians are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, where it's the power of God and the salvation. Glory. Go to work with a cross on. Don't be afraid. Take your Bible, lay it on the desk where you work. Don't be ashamed of it. Praise God. Love everybody. Treat everybody with respect. Reach out and reach out with love, but don't be ashamed. God has given you the greatest gift there is. It is the gift of salvation, and it is the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Amen. Time Lord. is running out. <laughs> Are you saved? Probably everyone here in the building here may be saved, maybe not. I don't know. Many are watching by the internet. But if you're not saved, I would call out to the Lord. I'm going to ask them to get a song tonight. And we have a breakfast in the morning. It's at the Country Kettle, the little restaurant just on the south side. Is that the south side? The south side of Knox, right on 35. Is that, no, is that the east? The east side of on the east side of the road, right? South side of Knox, um, the country kill, and uh, breakfast is tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Central Time, Knox Time, okay? It's free. If you came from out of town, come there, and uh, we're going to have fellowship. We do a meet and greet for all of you to come in from all across the country or, or you come out of town. If you come from out of town, just come on. And we, and we meet one another and hear each other's testimonies and have breakfast together and just have a great time. We're going to do that tomorrow, all right? Praise God. It's awesome. It's my favorite, favorite thing of the whole weekend. I'm going to ask you to stand. If there be any here tonight, the preachers are coming. If there be any here tonight that aren't saved, they would like to be saved. Those of you that are being baptized, we do this every time. If you're being baptized tonight, if you'd like to come down and kneel at the altar and pray just before... Why don't you come do that now? And as you're coming, there may be others that say, Pastor, I didn't come here tonight to get saved, but God is speaking to my heart. Or maybe you've been saved, but you've been drifting down a road that you don't want to go down. And you need a turnaround. And maybe God, maybe God brought you all the way here just for this moment in your life. Come on. Maybe this is why you're here tonight. Why don't you come down and pray? Step out of the pew and say, I gotta go down there and pray tonight. I need a, I need a recommitment to God. I, I need a rededication to the Lord. I, I need to share with the Lord some things. I need to pray. I know God loves me. I want Him to use me. I want to be where He wants me to be in His life. Take my life and use it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let God have his way tonight. Let God speak to your heart if you're watching at home right now. Type in the chat room, I want to be saved. Come on tonight. Come on. This is your moment. This is your hour. 
Today is the day of salvation. And that's what this offer is for. Amen. As they say.
Brother Paul's quote a few times. If any one or two will agree on one thing, that shall be done. Thank Father God, I come tonight with agreement in my heart, Father. I agree with the power of the Holy Ghost, Father. I thank you that you can touch us, Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Father God, we just come right now. We pray for these that come from Mississippi. Father God, I just pray that you touch their family. Yes, Father, Father God, I pray that you touch these ones. Glory to God. I ask you, Father God, just anoint them, Father God. As they go back, Father God, let them go back with joy in their heart, Father God. Yes, let them go back as a new creature in Christ. Father God, we ask you to touch them. But Father God, as you stand here and I ask you to touch your dad, I ask you to touch his hips, Father God. Yes, Lord. Father God, we know that you can touch and strengthen those that have bad hips, those that have bad backs. Father God, we know that you are the healer of all. Yes. Father yes. God, we just yes. ask you right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. But Father God, I come to agreement with my sister, Father God, yes. that you touch her heart, Father. Yes. Father God, we ask that you just move in the very midst of all this, Father. And Father God, I am most of all. I just ask that this be with each one of us tonight, Father God. Father God, that you just strengthen us, Father, as we go through our lives, Father God. And as we come with those things that Paul was talking about, Father God, I pray for strength and unity, Father God, that we can call upon our sisters and our neighbors, Father God. Glory. That we can grow strength in our neighbors and our families. Our families, Father God. Father God, because there are things coming against this world. Father God, we just thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory. I just thank you, Father Jesus God. Jesus, Lord. He's good that you stand in the gap for it, Father God. Yes, Lord. Father, we just thank ask you to move to the very wisdom. Father God, I just pray. And Brother Paul keeps you preaching the word, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just pray for us. Outpouring to yes, every time, Father. Thank you. Let more souls be saved. Yes, Father. Lord. Jesus. Father God, we pray for Jesus. deliverance. We pray for, to be delivered yes. from everything in this world. Thank you. Father God, the church needs to pray for deliverance too, yes. Father. Yes. I ask you to deliver us from the things of this world that hold us back. Father God, whether it be Congress or whether it be your neighbor, whether it be your wife or your husband, I ask for deliverance, Father Thank God, you, in Jesus' name. Jesus. And we all say, Amen. Amen. God. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. We're going to baptize these two. Is there anyone else that want to be baptized as well? Praise the Lord. Help us. the gospel. 
Yeah. So you're ready to be baptized? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, I do. Died on the cross, rose from the dead? Yes, I do. And this, is the, this represents his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, yes. in obedience to thy holy command, and upon confession of this my sister's faith, yes. we baptize her in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, yes. in Jesus' name. Praise yes. God! Come right on. Amen. Now, you're coming, uh, Cindy, you're coming all the way from the Ohio, the other side of Dayton, Ohio. Praise God. Now, how did, what happened to you? How did you get saved? I've just always believed in the Lord. I go to a lot of different churches. And I like to listen to you as well. And I listen with my brother in law. I like to hear the truth in any way that it comes. Well, praise God. Love is from the Lord. Amen. So you came today to get baptized. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. All right. Amen. Amen. Step right up here. It's the Lord. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, in obedience to thy holy command, and upon confession of this my sister's faith, we baptize her in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. The Bible says this is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, John preached repentance down at the River Jordan and uh, baptized them for remission of sins, for confessing their sins. And of course, Jesus came and John said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And uh, praise the Lord. Uh, Jesus just started to walk down into the water. And John said, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I, I can't baptize you. I need you to baptize me. Yeah. But Jesus said these words, our Lord and Savior. He said, yeah. suffer to be so, John, uh, uh, unto me, that we fulfill all righteousness. All right. And so he was baptized that day. And the Lord and Savior was doing it unto his death. He realized, and we today continue to do just that, baptizing people in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in Acts 2.38, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't come to the, there are people who know the Lord and they got right with God. And they, but listen, folks, if you make the commitment to get baptized at some point, you will, you will receive the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. It will make you stronger. Trust me. I'll tell you that. Praise God. You can say amen. 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 Praise God. All right. We're going to bow our heads in prayer. I'm going to ask Dad if he would dismiss us from the service. We'll be tomorrow breakfast at the Country Kettle at 9 a.m. Knox time. That's 10 Eastern, 9 Central. Tell you one thing. I believe the Bible says you need to repent. And his baptized shall be saved. Amen. 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 I may preach a little bit on water baptism. Praise God. Praise God. You know, the eunuch, he went to church, but he didn't get nothing. No. Until no. till old Philip come along and preached to him, and he preached Jesus. Yes, amen. And he also preached the water. Yes, he did. Amen. Because I know he did, because... The eunuch said, what hinders me from being, seeing I see water there, what hinders me from being baptized? I ask people all the time, what hindered you? You say you've been in church for years? Well, what hindered you from getting baptized? And I have some of them that tell me, I tell them you've got to get baptized. You must. Because Jesus said in, in John 3, he said, you've got to be born of the water and of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, they got so many arguments on all that. But listen, 48 years ago. Oh, oh God. God. I went to a church that wouldn't preach water baptism. Amen. They said you got to prove yourself. 
you got to live it for a while and see if you're going to make it or not. Uh -huh. And honey, without, unless you go down the water, you won't make it. I mean, I can tell you that, but I didn't. I called my pastor and I said, I want to get baptized tomorrow. Amen. He said, who do you want to baptize you? I said, I don't care who. I just want to get baptized. Praise because God. the Bible said i got to get baptized. Amen. Praise oh, Lord. I mean, I'll have to preach Sunday, but I'll just testify a little bit more. <laughs> Amen. I went took me out to the Yellow River just down the way. I, I praise the Lord. One was my brother-in-law. One was my uncle. I, I glory be to God. And I got a picture at home. I showed me coming out of the water. You can't pull these people out of water. Let them. I came out without their help. Amen. Oh, because the Holy Ghost got a hold on me. Amen. I hit the water. I hit faith. And boys, I started shouting. I'd never shouted in my life. I'd been in church all my life. I'd never shouted. I didn't know what was happening even. And I've been shouting for 48 years. <laughs> All you gotta do is believe. Huh? You gotta get baptized, brother. And you gotta get baptized in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Now, now it's Peter, like he started the scripture, said it. Uh, uh, Peter told him, he said, uh, uh, You gotta uh, uh, listen. Uh, uh, be baptized. And, and, and then you gotta uh, listen. After you believe, you're baptized. After that, you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah. uh, a lot of people, all uh, uh, they hung up on. Uh, of this uh, Pentecostal doctrine, uh, uh, honey, that you got to speak in tongues. Uh, uh, I don't see where he said you must speak in tongues. Ah, uh, uh, glory be to God for all my uh, tongue speaking brothers and sisters. But, uh, honey, there's so many ways out there. Uh, I heard the sister say she went to different churches. That's what's the problem. Uh, honey, listen. Uh, wherever you get saved uh, and get filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, if they got that, uh, you ought to stick with it. Amen. Uh, don't be a church hopper. Don't be jumping from one place to another. Amen. Uh, uh, praise. There's only one church anyway. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, we call ourselves Catholics. We call ourselves Catholics. We call ourselves Catholics and Methods and Lutherans. And all of it is just plain foolishness. Amen. Uh, uh, when I like one brother uh, calls his church T. Burry Hill. The church. Amen. And that's the only thing that matters. Huh? If you in with, in with the right bunch. Amen. Huh? Get in the right way and stay in there, honey. He that endure to the end shall be saved. Amen. Amen. They ain't go getting in and leaving there and jumping someplace else and, and go back out and go in the works of the flesh. Uh, uh, listen, uh, and then coming back and then go over this place and that place. Uh, honey, I tell you, get on a solid foundation. Uh, get on the truth. Amen. Yes. Uh, and Jesus is the only one that can tell you the truth. Amen. Uh, I fit it. Uh, I fit six years of preaching. Uh, uh, but finally I couldn't stand it no more. Ha! I told the Lord every excuse ha! under the book. Ha! Uh, but he said, you're my man and I want you to tell it just like you got it. Ha! And I got it from the Word of God. Ha! And I'm still learning. Hey man, ha! hey man, you're so smart. You know it all. Ha! You're smarter than me. Ha! I praise the Lord. Ha! But hear me, I'm so tickled to death this See these two get baptized. Amen. I woke up this morning. Ha, the wife was on the couch and I was on the bed. Ha, and we do that because we hurt from the Arthur and all that. Ha, and we want to. Ha, and I, when I woke up, ha, I saw this baptizing here tonight. Ha, Praise God. Amen. And I saw you guys baptized. And I know then. Ha, I said there'd be somebody. I don't know. I thought for a while was just one, but there was two. God give me two. Ha. people that are listening to everything under the world. I'm glad my son's on, on the internet because he tells it like he did. Yes, amen. And, you know, he, he's not going to be like me, everybody. Oh, Lord, no. Nobody is. No man is. I watched the funeral of Billy Graham. I thought, now that man was a man of God. But I'm sure he had his faults. But he was a man of God. Amen. We need more. 
Billy Graham. We need more great evangelists. My brother came up here and said he was a pastor. I said, where are you pastoring at? And he didn't seem to know. And he said, well, you've got your evangelist. He said, what well, he does. Well, he said, you are say you're evangelist then. And he said that they don't want evangelists no more. I right. doubt that. He's right. They don't want pastors either. <laughs> they just want a yes man. Yeah, I get that all the time. But the problem with that is I have to say no. Because if I become a yes man to you all, brother, I ain't worth a nickel to the Lord. Is that the truth, brother? That's the truth. Because I was called to preach the truth. Amen. And if it hurts, you just have to scratch it. Because <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Because the Bible said all liars will go to hell. And I'm afraid these lost creatures are going to go to hell. Not His will. And God's covered up for many of us. But it's time to quit covering up. Get baptized! Amen. If you're like sitting here tonight and you believe that and you have stepped out for God and you believe His Word and you've repented of your sin, don't stop. Go right on. Go right on to the next two steps. Go ahead and get baptized. Amen. The way can get perfect because you'll never be perfect. Amen. And then get the Holy Spirit. I got it through the shaft. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord showed me that was all we go for. I boy think be a lot of places. Correct, but it doesn't matter to me about that anyway. Amen. And if you've got the Holy Ghost, don't go out and sin because you think you've got, got it. And like some of my brothers, they, they believe this eternal security, you know. They get it and they can't lose it. The only one can lose it, they have got it. I never did lose anything I didn't already have. Didn't you? So you've got you to gotta keep on serving the Lord. We got an old saying, an old Baptist saying, get right, live right, and then you end everything of y'all. Amen. 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 I, I, sometimes they call me Pentecostal. Don't get mad. Praise <laughs> the Lord. I don't care what you call me, as long as it's Lost Coast. Thank you. 